for a small ship in Star Citizen, the Mantis looks like it could be lifted right out of a feature Star Trek film. But is it all looks and no substance? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable RSI Mantis. The Mantis is an interdiction ship, whose somewhat unique talent is a quantum snare. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you know what to expect. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour An entry to the Mantis is via an elevator which is deployed underneath the centre of the ship. The control to bring the elevator both up and down is located on the underside of the ship. This takes you up into the main body of the Mantis. The pilot's chair is right to the front, off to the port side there is a bed, and off to the starboard side is component access and a coffee machine. At the back you can just see the QED, and the bed is fully working in game, and the restroom door opens and shuts. Be careful of your aim in here. Moving further forward to the front of the ship, you see the feature made out of the cockpit chair, which draws you in and out to the glass cockpit at the front. Notably, the Mantis has a really futuristic look and feel to it, and as a space for a solo pilot, it's really quite a nice one, and the bare minimum of amenities in terms of a bed, a bathroom and a beverage brewer actually stack up fairly well in setting the Mantis apart from many other combat ships at this size. Part 2. Combat Performance by default, your Mantis comes armed with dual size 3 fixed laser cannons mounted on either side underneath the nose, which have a high damage feel with a lower firing rate. They let you engage at long range, which seems appropriate for an interdiction ship, although the fixed positioning and slow fire rate can make it challenging to hit smaller ships. That weaponry is supplemented by the inclusion of four size 2 missiles, which give a nice boost to firepower. Flying the Mantis, you might however choose to swap those missiles out, either for size 3 missiles for the longer engagement range, or size 1 missiles to be able to more effectively engage targets up close. The Mantis is defended by two size 1 shield generators, which is the standard for small fighters and really nothing to write home about, other than to say that the military grade generators as stock save on upgrade costs later. But for many, what really sets the Mantis out from the crowd is the party trick, the interdiction QED, or quantum enforcement device. This can be used to snare ships out of quantum travel, as well as prevent ships from entering quantum travel. After a while testing the ship, the original script for this video said that really, it's a gimmicky feature and not hugely useful in game at the moment, although recently there was a post on reddit about somebody effectively using a QED to disable and board a cutlass with valuable minerals aboard, which the pirate then sold. Although I certainly wouldn't encourage that sort of behaviour, and using the QED is likely to leave you with a criminal record. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, because of your position in the pilot's chair being so far forward, it feels really good. In reality, you're fairly limited with visibility out to the sides, above and below, but because of the way the glass cockpit draws you in, you mostly feel like you can see what's going on. The engines do a great job with acceleration to the top speed of 1220 meters per second, and braking performance is also very reasonable. 
even slightly above SCM speeds, the Mantis feels responsive, and because of the military grade coolers, is quite happy to accept boost to keep the nose pointed where you'd like it. Those are all very appropriate qualities for an interdiction ship, and although the SCM speed at 168 meters per second is considerably slower than many fighters, the Mantis is comfortable to fly outside of that recommended limit. Landing can be a challenge, but not for the reasons you'd think. Actually, gracefully landing the Mantis isn't too bad once you recognize that the gear is towards the front of the ship, but trying to get the pad to recognize that you've landed is a tough job entirely, usually only achieved by switching the engines off. The quantum drive is fairly quick and has a low cooldown, but the range is also very limited, with the Mantis not quite able to make the distance between Hurston and Olisar without a fuel stop, so it's either a ship to operate at short range, or sadly to downgrade the otherwise excellent quantum drive. Part 4 – Operating Costs with fairly small fuel tanks, and especially with the stock laser weapons, the Mantis is incredibly cheap to operate, with costs usually in the low hundreds. Moreover, the weaponry is powerful enough to deal with some fairly meaty combat contracts, which see the Mantis easily turn a profit. The Mantis also features plenty of internal space, and entry via an elevator, and so the various contracts that require physicalized storage, such as box delivery missions, are also feasible with the Mantis. And there's room for another player too, even informally seated on the bed, meaning that on the off chance that a player offers payment for transport from A to B, if you're feeling particularly trustworthy, that might be an option too. Part 5 – The Verdict There's a lot to like about the Mantis. Firstly, aesthetically, it looks great, both inside and out, with a futuristic feel to it. The flight model is really nice, and even without much time in the cockpit, the Mantis is really easy to fly. The weaponry isn't great, but isn't bad either, and the components equipped as stock are largely top-of-the-line kit. Plus, they're not really seen around the verse too often, so you get the cool factor of people seeing your ship with curiosity. There are some gripes, mostly about the fairly limited utility of the QED in-game at the moment, but also that the landing gear bugs out from time to time, and you have to toggle the QED just to get the landing gear to do what you want. At 1.2 million Alpha UEC in-game, the Mantis actually comes at a fairly accessible price point. The Mantis is also available for $150 as standalone in the Pledge Store, which is a little steep, as if you're willing to spend that much, you might prefer to buy something else, such as a Hornet, and earn the Mantis in-game. And that in-game price makes this actually a really interesting buy option, hovering around what you'd pay for a Gladius, but trading off firepower for the QED and some internal space instead. Hopefully, as more gameplay features come online, the Mantis will bloom into something even more interesting. But do you agree? What do you think of the Mantis? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, you might press that like button, and you might also be interested in my review of the Cutlass Blue as an alternative. Otherwise, as ever, thank you for watching.